What's up everybody, it's your boy here to talk about Workout in New York. Like I said, I didn't do this on the Real Housewives of Atlanta video, but y'all know I got my drink. This right here is the uh, Strawberry Orange Banana Crystal Light. It's fucking delicious. They need to sponsor my ass. I'm just saying. So we're gonna go ahead and jump through this. Uh, Jay and Layla uh, meet up with her mother, uh, Mama Love. She's a free spirit, very open, especially when it comes to sex and all that good jazz. Even uh, ooh, about to drop my damn nose shit. Even goes so far as to give uh, Jay. I always gotta take my time because I swear I mix up Jay and Joe. Uh, but to give Jay a pair of uh, fuzz uh, handcuffs as like a welcome to the family. And you know, I'll be honest if. Well, one, I wouldn't be fucking around with somebody like Layla, especially with everything that goes on to her being so overly hypersexual. Because <clears throat> like I said, that's not what I do. So I wouldn't be with her anyway. But if but if uh, somebody's mother was like that, I wouldn't necessarily DQ somebody. But that's one of those ways kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Because, you, you know, uh, especially, you know, since my mom, we ain't even talking about my mom right now. Anyway. <laughs> But moving the fuck on, Lindsay and Layla, they uh, go um, shopping and whatnot, and uh, Lindsay decides to share that uh, Courtney did not come to Lena's event, but Joe did, and she's astounded. Like, Joe came, and he's like, yeah, came with flowers. Like, was he wearing them? It's just like, you can tell that, you know, she's bothered by Joe. Is fucking bothered. <clears throat> And then Lena comes in, you know, she talks about like, yeah, he was nice, this, that, and the third. And her whole thing is, you know, if uh, she and uh, Joe just uh, kind of have more time together, maybe, you know, they might uh, get to like each other. <clears throat> so you can start to see that, okay, the whole being left out type thing. So uh, <clears throat> now we're back at Hell's Kitchen. You have uh, Joe working with his clientele. He print his uh, style of training is a uh, high intent. Well, I'm sorry, is a uh, very individualized where he's one on one with his client rather than doing something like boot camp style. And uh, like I said, he does high intensity training, most confusion, all the good jazz. <clears throat> I know those all too well because that's what I do. Again, if y'all haven't seen, I just slim down on y'all asses. I'm less than 10 pounds away from my first goal of 220. When I hit 220, I would do a special video and let y'all see the before pictures. Y'all gonna be like, no, the fuck you wasn't, dude. But not about me, back to this. So, um, <clears throat> they're working out, um, you know, <clears throat> and you, um, Holly gets to see that Noah and Joe have a budding, you know, bromance, you know, <clears throat> and she was like, this might be the birth of, uh, Joa. So, um, they're, uh, all three of them are supposed to be going to, uh, ninja training on, uh, an upcoming Friday. And as soon as Layla and Joe come in, you know, uh, Layla is on Joe's back. And here's the thing, you all, you already see that, you know, Joe is not here for Layla. I don't think he has any beef with um, Jay, though, but he's not feeling Layla. So when she walks in, hey, there's no reason for him to be there. He's done with his clientele. He leaves. And I'm fucking him for it. Just like, his, and I, I can see his whole thing is, you not finna use, like, even though... Layla's about to use him for a storyline. She's not finna use him for a storyline, and I, I'm so fucking here for it. The only thing is, <clears throat> uh, they bring up the ninja training, and you know, and Layla whole thing is like, what am I chopped liver? Because she's mad because like, okay, I'm ostracized from the group, and Noah invites her, but later gets a phone call from Joe, just like, I don't want her ass there, <laughs> which I think that uh. <clears throat> Joe should have probably made that shit clear from Jump Street. FYI, just us three, nobody else. And it sucks that Noah had to deliver that, but probably shouldn't have did that open-ended invitation. And, um, you know, Layla feels some kind of way, but on some real shit, when you attack somebody and you come at somebody the way that you fucking did, on some real shit, ain't nobody going to fuck with you. And, I mean, y'all let me know in the comments how y'all feel about what Joe did. Like I said, I don't necessarily agree with the phone call and everything, but it is what it is. But I'm all here for it. shit. Fuck you and the horse you rode up in here. You stay over there, I stay over here. Since so you want to sit here and cut me motherfucking left, cut me motherfucking left. And her whole thing is she keeps trying to figure out if I can't be in the same room as Joe, when can we ever talk about it? Why don't you put on your grown pants and be like, you know what, Joe, can I please talk to you one on one? And you talk like a mature adult. But again, she is so fucking childish in the brain, she probably doesn't know how. Now, y'all know I didn't say it last week, 
I wasn't, I didn't see it with two fucking people. Actually, I've been saying since I didn't review this shit, Layla and Courtney, I'm not seeing it for, I'm not here for them. For obvious fucking reasons, fuck both of them. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> Lena calls Courtney uh, and he answers and she straight goes in. It's like, where the fuck were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'll be on some real shit. You ain't finna call the motherfucking phone that my ass paid for and get to yelling at me. Because I'm going to do one of three things. I'm either going to hang up on your ass, cuss your ass, smooth the fuck out. Or more than likely, I'm going to tell you, you know what? You're uh, coming to me very disrespectful on a phone line that I pay for. So either A, you need to... Uh, talk to me as if you have some sense or B, uh, we're going to end this call and we could try it again at a different motherfucking time. Cause you're not gonna do that. You know, cause as like I said, that's probably the quickest way to get my ass smooth the fuck out of character. But he took it in spirit. He was like, well, first off, congratulations. And she still wanna know, he was just like, look, I got the damn, you know, I guess like pre-diagnosis from the uh, doctor. I have to go in for MRI, this and the third. And I was in a sucky mood. So I didn't want to be there knowing that I would be in a bad mood to fuck up your mood. Now, did I not say that the whole MRI thing last week? I know the fuck I'm talking about. I had two knee surgeries, but at the same exact time, unfortunately, I am I connect with one thing when it comes to Courtney. If I'm in a fucked up mood, I don't want to be around other people, especially at somebody's event, because I can sit here and try to force a smile, but if I'm in a funk, I'm, I can't do it, and I don't want to sit here and fuck up somebody's event with my fucked up attitude. You feel me? So I understand him on that. Gosh, I have something in common. Um, so they uh, do the whole ninja thing. So it's uh, Joe, Holly, Noah, Lena. I believe that was everybody. And they're having fun. As this and third, Holly wants to experience Joe for herself because everything she's heard about him has been secondhand. Uh, and Joe apologizes to Noah. He's like, bro, my bad for putting you in that motherfucking situation. But, you know, no whole thing is I understand how shit went between y'all. And for what I see is not personal, but just the whole atmosphere, this and third. But this shit is personal. So Layla and Courtney get together and, uh, you know, they want to get the tea on Joe. So they put on wigs, uh, glasses, trench coats, and they first go to um, the gym that Joe primarily works at. And then they go to uh, a little coffee shop. They really don't get anything on him except for that he's a drama king. But shit, bitch, I'm a drama king too. Hell. All right. So it is what the fuck it is. Um, <clears throat> so Holly enjoyed her time with Joe. And, you know, Joe pretty much says that when he deals with people, he's going to give you professional him because, you know, you never know who's around you, this, that, and the third. And you always want to put your best foot forward. Sound fucking advice. But at the same exact time, he's like, he's worried about who he lets in because when you open up your life to people, you can give them ammunition and use the fuck against you. But his thing, bro, when you own your fucking past, you ain't got to worry about somebody using shit against you. Food for thought. <sighs> Damn it, I, 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 I don't know, y'all. I'm tell I, Courtney and Layla go have to do some shit to fucking win me on their motherfucking team. I'm just saying. But Holly goes to get a haircut from a celebrity stylist who is also her uh, client uh, because she has a date. Courtney hooked her up with somebody. Layla uh, goes to her mom's apartment and she and Layla pretty much admits that she has a problem more or less committing because she's a free spirit like her mother and things are different between her and Jay. Again, I have to apologize. I swear we wouldn't call him Joe and vice versa. Holly goes on a date. Uh, she pretty much says that in her last relationship, uh, her and her girlfriend at the time, they were compatible. But she let uh, her career get in the way. And again, I know how it is when you're just focused about getting, you know, work, work, work done. Because, I mean, in a day is, you know, that's what pays bills and shit. So I do understand that. But she was not compatible with uh, her date. But she got a kiss out of it, you know. So, yay, got a kiss. Um, and Courtney, uh, so uh, Layla stops by his apartment because apparently uh, her mother stays in the general area that he does. So, you know, hey, in the neighborhood, let me stop by. Uh, on, on some real shit. I'm one of them motherfuckers where I don't give a fuck if your ass in the neighborhood if you pass by my house, motherfucker. You better call me before your ass arrive because if you knock, I'm gonna hit you up with a little Richard. Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. Like, I don't I do not do that. You gonna call before your ass come. That, that's me. I don't like that whole just pop up at a motherfucker. You don't, like, I don't, I don't do that. But, um, you know, they talk about her uh, mama love and, uh, and then, uh, Courtney gets a call from uh, his colleague Alex and Alex pretty much tells him that because uh, you know he had Alex do some digging since they weren't able to find anything 
and I was pretty much told from what I heard, not what I know. So allegedly, Joe still, yeah, Joe steals clients. And Courtney whole thing is, well, I'ma just, I'm sorry, I'm looking at this damn commercial, that's a nice little bit. But uh, he gonna take that as gospel, as truth, and it's one of those where he should've listened to him closing because again, even though he didn't say allegedly, he heard, which means that the source may not necessarily be a credible source, so. It is what the fuck it is. But he about to be messy and again, y'all know I don't see it for the motherfucker. Alright, so is Lindsay's a dirty 30. Um, and her whole thing is she wants to just forget everything that has happened within the last year and just enjoy her night. Um, she's enjoying her B-Day. Courtney decides to pull Joe off to the side. You know, just kind of, you know, has some shit out because his whole thing is like I want to kill the weirdness yada 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 long story short he asked him you well he was like well I heard because you know the fitness industry is a small industry and I can believe that hell air traffic controllers we a fucking small a fucking small unit so if you don't know somebody trust somebody knows this motherfucker that you don't know so it's that fucking small and he was like well I heard you know that you still client Joe's like I've never still client in my life and he says in his confessional that he has a laundry list of people that want to work with him I mean, here's the thing, you know, he may not steal clients, but that doesn't mean that somebody sees how uh, he works with his clients and want to leave who they're with to go seek him. Because, again, he has a more individualized type of training. And, I mean, you know, you have people that, okay, like me, I, I want to work with someone. I don't want to be in a whole group, this, that, and the third. Like, I'm one of those, like, I like small set types of shit. So, that's just me. So, um, you know, um... Courtney says he'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but don't trust the motherfucker. And you know, he was, and you saw Layla looking over the whole entire time. So that leads me to believe that she truly did put his ass up to it, despite the fact he denies it. Um, so Layla holding, you know what? Because I think, uh, they, I forget, I think it was uh, Lindsay, no, Holly that was saying, go over there and just talk to him. She was like, you know what? This probably is the time I won't do it. And I was actually here for like, you know what? That's good. But as he's going through hugging everybody, he hugs her and I'm like, that's nice, that's cool. And now she wants to talk to him. And, you know, she brings up, well, I was invited by Noah, but uninvited by you. And his whole thing is, I'm not for the front like I enjoy your damn company because I don't. And long story short, she's very abrasive. And his whole thing is, I don't get along with personalities like that. So let's not, I don't want to sit here and pretend that it is what it ain't. You feel what I'm saying? And I mean, it is what the fuck it is, because his whole thing is, you just have a personality that I don't mesh with, that I don't fuck with, and I don't see myself, you know, getting along with you. But again, this is what happens. First impressions are everything. Granted, people have given him a chance, but you can't go, like, try to go for somebody's fucking jugular, asking about their money and shit, and unbeknownst to him, you just sat here and tried to spy on him. Like, I cannot wait for the fucking reunion. I swear for Lord, I want to see him read her ass to the motherfucking afterwife. I'm just saying, I want to see that shit happen. I want to see it happen on Christmas Day. I want to see him bury her ass, resurrect her, and bury her once again. Just saying. Just saying. Alright, and to go ahead and uh, end this rack quick. Um, Joe pretty much tells her, you know, like I said, I don't hate you. I just don't like your personality. And she's trying to figure out, like, how can we call this? Hey, <laughs> he told her. <laughs> Told us some shit that I would say. My whole thing, my thing is, we just keep it business. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't got shit to do with business, we don't need to talk to each other. I'm the type of motherfucker, don't even say hi and bye to my motherfucking ass. Don't you pretend like I'm ghost. Like, I don't fucking exist. Call my ass Casper. Okay? But I ain't friendly. I, I wish I remember what the other brothers' names were, because I would have said one of their names was shit. But that's just me. His whole thing is, we can say hi, bye, and leave it at that. And, you know, she feels some kind of way. And, you know, I guess they, like, shake hands and, you know, Joe up and leaves and shit. And right after that, you know, uh, you know, she go talk to Jay. And, you know, she just, like, you know, she's upset. And Jay whole thing is, well, if you don't care, why are you upset? And she's in her feelings. And you can see that she's on the verge of crying. I think in her mind is one of those where it's just, like, because she was trying to rally. Let's call her fucking space, space. She was trying to rally the whole gang to not like this one fucking person. And now look what happened. You the motherfucker that's ostracized. So everybody fucks with him but you. And I don't even think there's any ill will between him and fucking Jay. It's just his girl. Which is one of those where more or less 
Jay probably not gonna fuck with him, you know, to, you know, keep his girl happy or whatnot. It is what the fuck it is. But my thing is, how are you trying to sit here and make nice with the motherfucker when you didn't say he did some shady shit? And she never once said, you know what, I apologize for. Never once said that. So you can't expect to make nice with this motherfucker when you have not apologized. Or as uh, it was said in Medea's Christmas, apologize. You didn't fucking do it. So... It is what the fuck it is. That's all I got for you guys. Uh, like I said, it seems that I might, ha I might have to, you know, give Courtney a pass next week. Maybe, maybe. Cause again, I had a surgery and shit, so I'm a little sympathetic, but not by much. But that's all I got, you guys. That's my video for workout in New York. It is don't stop December. I'm almost done. Uh, you guys, I'll look out this week. Um, <clears throat> of course, I'm gonna do Black Ink Crew and Love and Hip Hop tomorrow. Um, I'm also Tuesday going to reveal what the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the BU 365 January challenge is. I, I will reveal that on Tuesday. Wednesday, I will hit you guys with the video of when I came home Jewish. So, yay. That's all that I have, but look forward to that. And like I said, it's almost a new year and I, I really want to see everybody, you know, back in 2016. So that is all that I have. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank y'all for taking time out of your day to watch me. Rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys next week or on the next video. Whatever comes first. Peace.